Greetings, my fellow cadets, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k lore video focused on the forces of the Imperial Guard. Just like I promised in my earlier Commissar video, this episode will serve as part 2, and in it we will cover the rank structure of the Commissariat, the unique attire and war gear of these political officers, and a bit more detail on their roles and duties. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more on these scary discipline officers, shall we? And concerning the rank structure, we will start at the bottom. The Cadet Commissars. They are Commissars in training. Assigned to Commissar training squads, they are armed and equipped with the standard gear of a regular guardsman, although they maintain their usual Commissar panoply. Leather long coat, gloves, jack boots, and high peaked caps. Their uniforms only differ slightly from a full commissar by featuring blue trim and a cadet commissar emblem instead of the usual death's head emblem of a full commissar. Their training has no set duration, and a cadet commissar will only be graduated to full commissar status upon being deemed worthy by the commissariat. Those who fail in their duty, but have not shown cowardice or insubordination, are relieved of their duty. Commissar cadets who fail in their training can often get a commission in a penal battalion. Others volunteer for service in a rogue trader entourage. Sometimes, their destiny will be decided by the commissar general or commissar under whom the ex-cadet trained. The Junior Commissar they are subordinates to full commissars, performing the role of a junior aide in the oversight of the regiment or starship assigned to a full commissar. They primarily perform as adjutants and an investigatory role as well as carrying out the usual commissarial duties, although they do not have permission to perform executions without prior consent from higher ranked officers. Junior Commissars often undertake their commissarial role with smaller formations, such as an individual squad, platoon, or company. The Commissar The Commissar is the standard rank of these political officers, at least one being assigned per regiment of the Imperial Guard or starship of the Imperial Navy. It is their duty to encourage the men of the Imperial Guard to fight, fighting alongside the regiment's officers and taking control when morale is flagging or the men are not fighting with sufficient zeal. In such situations, a commissar can take over command from an officer and summarily execute any man who tries to flee. Even the colonel of a regiment must be sure to display courage and zeal at all times when a commissar is present. The Commissar Captain this is a rarely seen rank that is an intermediary position between a full commissar and a commissar general. Though the particular role of a commissar captain is not easily defined, it has been observed that commissars who maintain this rank have been supervising at a regimental level. The Colonel Commissar The Colonel Commissar is a very rare rank conferred upon a commissar only in unusual or extraordinary circumstances. This rank refers only to those commissars awarded regimental command rank and charged with commanding an Imperial Guard regiment. Though the award of such a rank occurred as recently as the Sabbat World's Crusade to Colonel Commissar Ibram Gaunt of the Tanif first and only, following the destruction of Tanif, the inherent conflict between the performance of the dual roles of commissar and regimental commanding officer is normally seen as a threat to a regiment's discipline by the commissariat. The Lord Commissar The Lord Commissars are senior-ranking commissars, promoted to this esteemed rank after displaying exemplary battlefield service. The battlefield heroics of a Lord Commissar are often the stuff of legend among the average guardsmen. The PDF Commissar This specific assignment is a bit outside the rest of the hierarchy, as it is not really a sought-after position. 
the Commissariat has oversight authority over of all branches of the Imperial military, with the exception of the Adeptus Astartes, Adeptus Sororitas, and Skitari soldiers of the Adeptus Mechanicus. This, of course, includes the planetary defense forces as well. Commissars assigned to these thankless postings are usually advanced in age, or have been subjected to disciplinary action. In practice, only a single commissar would be assigned to the PDF of an entire world, but playing little to no role in the activities of such forces. Therefore, the majority of these local planetary defense forces are ignorant of these commissars' existence. Some PDF forces maintain their own local commissariats. Tensions are often strained between those local commissariats and the official imperial commissariat, especially in matters of jurisdiction. It has even been known for imperial commissars to execute their local counterparts for overstepping their authority. And finally, the commissar general. This is the most senior rank in the commissariat. Besides their usual duties, these highly experienced commissars are also tasked with the additional responsibilities of assigning commissars under their command to overwatch Imperial Guard officers and promoting commissar cadets to full commissar status. The Commissar's War Gear The commissar's standard uniform consists of the great coat with identifying gold and red epaulets and red lining on collar and cuffs, a peaked officer's cap, usually black with red lining, and bearing an aquila or skull motif that denotes a member of the commissariat, a black undercoat with either red or gold finery, black combat pants, and combat boots. Many commissars, particularly those who take on active combat roles, wear breastplates, usually decorated with the same motifs as their cap. Many also carry devotional symbols, such as Aquila pendants, or copies of various imperial cult gospels or imperial war manuals. Commissars are issued with a standard weapon complement of a bolt pistol and chainsword, which is first presented at their commissioning ceremony as a full commissar in their Scola Progenium's High Chapel. Commissar cadets are issued with a standard Imperial Guard last gun, or an autogun, depending on their associated regiment, as well as any other kit their regiment may supply them with. Commissars attached to certain regiments sometimes adopt unique elements of that regiment's uniform, such as a gas mask or desert headscarves, for the purpose of practicality and to make them seem more at home in the regimental culture. Commissars have access to the Imperial officer's armory, and as such can arm themselves with a variety of weapons. Commissars usually tend to stick with their standard loadout for sentimental reasons, until they lose an element of it or gain notoriety enough to request more powerful weapons. Plasma pistols, due to their rarity, are usually reserved for high-ranking officers and commissars, though many tend to stick with their own bolt pistols, due to the plasma weapon's tendency to overheat and melt your freaking arm off in the middle of battle. Power weapons are easier to requisition, and are often requested to replace the standard issue chainsword. Commissars have been seen carrying anything from the classic power sword to the rarer power axe. Some commissars have been known to use power fists, though those are far the rarest of the weapons used by the commissariat. Commissars have also been known to carry laser weapons, from LAS pistols paired with a close combat weapon to their regiment's standard issue LAS rifle. This is usually attributed to a familiarity and fondness developed for the reliability of the less powerful but more stable laser weapons during their stints in the Imperial Guard as Commissar Cadets. A commissar is empowered to ensure the moral purity and devotion of the men and women of his or her platoon, company, or regiment by any means necessary. It is therefore not uncommon to see a commissar executing any enlisted guardsman, non-commissioned officer, or even officer 
showing signs of breaking due to overwhelming odds. Commissars attached to a unit will rarely see their unit break in combat, as their own presence is usually enough to ensure that only the weakest and most stupid will attempt to flee. Commissars unable to demand the fear and respect of a broken unit, however, often find themselves killed by the deserting unit as they know the Commissar would shoot them all before he lets them retreat. Commissars have been known to assume leadership positions for brief periods, usually a single battle, after executing a leading officer, such as a sergeant or minor lieutenant, and lead their charges forward with zeal and confidence that other officers are rarely capable of even considering in the face of the enemy. Commissars are enabled to execute any officer they see fit, including regimental commanding officers, and can execute even Lord Generals or Governors Militant if they have sufficient evidence of incompetence or treachery. During planetary reclamation campaigns, in which the populace has been living for extended periods of time under alien domination, it is not uncommon practice for the regimental commissariat to set up information stations for the locals to give anonymous information detailing the activities of human traitors who aided the alien forces in their occupation. This is most common on worlds taken from the Tao Empire, as most other alien races usually destroy the previous occupants of the world. When the activity of chaos is suspected, however, it is usually common practice for the commissariat to refer this to the Inquisition, though commissars are empowered to deal with the situation on their own if no inquisitorial forces are available. Extended campaigns often call for extra duties to ensure the morale of the troops is kept high. As such, commissars can requisition administratum scribes to draft extensive propaganda pieces so long as their superior officers approve. This is a favored tactic during siege campaigns, when imperial forces can be cut off from reinforcements and supplies, and troop dedication becomes of the utmost priority. All commissars are trained as excellent orators, and often deliver grand speeches to their regiment or company prior to battle. During battle, the commissar is almost always among the front lines, and roars a litany of battle cries and prayers to the emperor to inspire his troops to battle. This often leads to friendly rivalry between the commissar and any priest of the ecclesiarchy present, as both men will constantly try to outdo each other with both stirring speeches and demonstrations of valor meant to motivate the men. Another of the commissar's duties is to keep a watchful eye on any psyker under his care. Astropaths and sanctioned psychers attached to the Imperial Guard are trained to use their powers and are relatively capable of controlling them but commissars are trained to watch out for any signs of possible warp taint and demonic possession, like gibbering, foaming, sleepwalking, channeling your dead relatives, etc. Whenever this happens, the commissar will swiftly step in and execute the psyker with a point-blank shot to the head. While this policy has led to many unnecessary executions of the Imperial Guard's core of sanctioned psychers, the Commissar never hesitates. It is better to kill an innocent than to be faced with the fury of a newborn demon host. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on Commissars for today. I will be doing maybe a few more videos in the future on famous commissars and their exploits, such as Sebastian Yarek, Ibram Gaunt, or Cephas Cain. If you have any lore questions or thoughts and suggestions, always feel free to leave them in the comments below. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you'd like to see similar videos in the future, maybe subscribe to my channel. I thank you very much for watching and wish you an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.